Hey there, submarine fans, it's Eric from the Subvet.com. You're listening to the Subvet 2023. Van Bell, Bayton Missile for WSRC. Set up all missiles. Activate emergency action procedure for nuclear weapon release. In Southeast Asia, we call this type of thing bad karma. Who else reads books about submarines? My dad. Yeah. Have you ever seen a submarine movie? Oh my god. Operation Petticoat, Dodge Boot, The Enemy Below, Run Silent, Run Deep, uh, Grey Lady Down. Ooh, yellow submarine. Yellow submarine, yes. Well, there's so many submarine movies. Sounds like a gold crew problem. Welcome back. I know it's been a while. Seems like, uh, it's almost like we've been on patrol. It's been a few minutes. It's yeah, almost like. I, pre- I just kept, just got back. Yeah. I was on the, uh, was on, the, um, um, I don't know, the, uh, let's make up a boat. USS on, uh, used to fish. The, the, the Bill Gates. I was on the USS Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want Heck, to know he what's going. He might, he might even have his own boat. Who knows? <laughs> Very well could. Yeah. So Eric's been under the weather and having some uh, having some issues with his knee surgery and recovering from 12 surgeries, but he's back. Yeah. Just 12, after 12 surgeries and, and then, well, you know, this last knee, it's still not cooperating. You know, sometimes you just got to st- step back and just, focus on yourself a little bit so had a lot of atrophy so i've had to uh do a lot of recovery just to get things going because when you're sitting around for well it was like a year and a half that i i was uh what do you call it sedentary and you just lose a lot of muscle tone getting cramps all the time so just had to hit the gym and working out some light weights and Getting getting back on things, so uh, uh, they're talking about maybe having to go back in on the top. There's like a defect on the incision. Looks like I get a scan tomorrow to see. I got like a little lizard looking thing. I I, sh- I should take a picture. Maybe we could put. I'll take a picture of it. You could put it up on the video. It's like a. It looks like a, a little alien, like on the top of my knee. A little bulge. It sticks out that far. So I've been waiting for that thing to pop out because it, t- it like, felt like a tearing sensation. I'm like, uh oh, it's coming out. It's gonna get me. So you oh, know, got the end of the world. Can't Ninety seconds. Ninety seconds to midnight. You know, I saw your podcast on that, and I got aliens coming out of my knee. So hey, might as well throw that in with everything else that's going on. You know what they didn't tell us about? Oh, <laughs> what's that? about the asteroid that flew by today? Oh, they, I, you know, I, did, I briefly read something about that because uh, I was on another appointment today. I was at the hospital. I saw that. Yep. Of course all, they wouldn't tell you. All they're worried about is Vladimir Putin and climate change. Asteroid? Eh, who cares? Eh, eh just a <laughs> No biggie. Side away coming your way, you know, no mm-hmm. big deal. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so Eric's back. That's the good news, I guess. Uh, the, the even better news is that a month from now, I'll I'll be headed out myself for yeah, headed out, months, so. two months so it it's uh and and my surgery i'm not even going to be able to talk so that's i know some of you are some of you missile techs out there are rejoicing about that i'm sure but you, well, so what are you going to do all the podcasting you do you're on wmb down in melbourne and i'm not uh i'm, I'm not totally sure it, it really depends on how quickly i can recover and having some some major dental oral maxophilia surgery or whatever it is. I'll cover your history spot for you every Tuesday down there in Melbourne for you. You're going to have to clear that out with Bill. <laughs> the time's going to say talk to Bill about it. Because <laughs> he's, uh, he's in charge of that. Anyway, so I'll be heading out uh, in the middle of March for that. and uh, we'll, But we'll uh, we'll still be around. I mean, you can still email us. You can yeah, still we'll do it. Well, it seems like you know uh, the one of the last podcasts we did where we did the on watch routine. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it seems like a lot of people really enjoyed that. So maybe we can, uh, I don't know, maybe we can do some more of that, come up with some version of it, and that way we can have guests come on, and, you know, and uh, just like they're walking into MCC and 
having well, we some could go fun. Hang out. We could go hang out in the torpedo room or. All right. Hey, what, 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 we can't have any nukes, you know, because, you know, the only time you see those guys in a chat, if child, if it wasn't for them coming up to eat, you have better luck finding a Bigfoot than seeing a nuke walk around a boat. So really, is... <laughs> I never had that. Problem. So here's the, here's the thing: I, I used to hang out in the engine room, sp- specifically the PLO bay, because uh-huh. I there was a big valve back there, and you know it's been forty years since I left the boat, so I don't really remember what it was, but right. it was a it was a valve, and it had really cold water in it, so I'm assuming it was the seawater valve. And I like to just go back there and sit on that valve. I'm very warm blooded for those of you that don't know. So I would go back there and just sit on that valve for 20, 30 minutes. You know I, I, on, on, the Ohio, on the Ohio class boats I wrote for uh, missile launches at no two. I, I never went back in engineering. I can't remember if the, they just didn't want us back there, which might've been the case, you know, riders, there might be some kind of rule with that, but. I just don't remember going back there and touring. I remember touring the rest of the boat, but not back aft. You know. I also noted that one of the few places they look for FTBs is in the engine room. They'll never find you. No. Where's Dave? <laughs> Where's Dave? Where are you mad? Back on the valve. He's reading the book on the valve. Engineer would come through. What are you doing, Bowman? He's trying to hatch another one. <laughs> Keeping cool, sir. Keeping cool. Submariners are weird people, and. We being submariners, we're weird people. So I went over to the uh, Keyport base today. They have the Naval Undersea Warfare Museum there, which if you've never had a chance to go, it is certainly worth the trip. I mean, I wouldn't come here just for that, but if you're here, you don't want to miss it. How's that? Or maybe you do want to come here just for that. I don't know. Isn't it like a escape from new york and seattle and stuff getting yeah, here now it's a good escape from seattle I mean, <laughs> escape from oh, seattle wow. so you come see the museum and then you got to escape from seattle on the way out right <laughs> don't even get me started on seattle get, <sighs> gotta get snake pliskin to help you out <laughs> seattle has become for, for those of you that might have been stationed here when i was stationed here back in the 80s and seattle was seattle was fun it was a place to go it was cool it was it's not that anymore. It's it, it's a hellhole. I wouldn't. You you couldn't pay me yeah. much to Seattle anymore. That's why I don't go to Mariners games. I used to go to Mariners games all the time when I was here, but I don't go yeah. anymore. So, well, I mean, d- even downtown Denver, the scene's just completely changed. When you go down there, used to be just a lot of people down there, uh, all the different eateries and the and clubbing and stuff, and it's just nobody's out anymore. It's I mean, just a few people, but not like it used to be. Like right. you go down you on could, Friday night, it was crazy town. You could say it was because of COVID, but it's not. It's just because it's become um, a miniature San Francisco in some ways. Anyway, I went to the yeah. museum today. Yeah, so how was and that? They have a new exhibit that they've just launched probably in the last few months. Uh, I had not been to the museum since 2019, pre-COVID. And the new exhibit, the old exhibit was the Thresher exhibit. So they had all the Thresher artifacts out there. And to be honest, it's it's a it's an interesting thing to go see, but I didn't like to go see it. Right. It just that still bothers me uh, tremendously. Um, yeah. If you, you if you've been at sea on the submarine, and then you, even just when you look at pictures like that, you're like, oh, yeah. You like you got to be kidding me. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know the one thing about. My time in the Navy, as we always said, well, they never knew what hit them. They never felt it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but do, do but you really know that? <laughs> no, you don't know that. And B, believe me, for the 20, 30 minutes they were going down, they knew it was coming. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's – anyway, they had that exhibit for a long oh, time. Why, why did you have to even bring that up? Oh, I, I, I don't just know. thought about that. <laughs> but now they've replaced that with a new exhibit, which is about submariners in general and who we are – how we live, how we handle things. And it talks about everything from uh, when, you, when you get out of – it starts after sub-school. You report to your boat as a non-qual, and it covers how people qualify on the ship, and it qualifies – it covers how we eat and how we sleep and how we joke around with each other. Uh, what are you doing in the rack, nub? <laughs> my, fa- my favorite was the other crew. Because, you know, those of us that are boomer sailors, we understand this. 
there's three crews on a submarine. You understand that? The blue crew, the gold crew, and the other crew. And the other crew. Right. And it's the other crew that always breaks everything. And they have right. they have a pretty big uh, diagram of that up there, which is pretty funny. It deals with <laughs> it deals with the family life, you know how the families yeah. deal with some of those things. And you know it's kind of weird for me because when I was in, I was not married, I didn't have a family, so I never really saw so, that side of it. Yeah, to talk about as soon as you as soon as you left on your boat, your wives were out at the club at the listed club. That's showing you that that didn't come up particularly no because uh, i think they're trying to keep about, it you know clean. all the divorces they didn't show none of that none of that no, they talked no, a lot about the no. stress <laughs> um, they uh they had some- so they weren't talking about real submarine issues okay anyways <laughs> well see i was talking to the museum director and she was saying that the 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 exhibit has been generally well received but it does have some controversy and she says some of the some of the submariners some of us are complaining about some of the things that are in it because we don't we don't see it that way or we didn't like it that way or that wasn't what it was like on my boat or whatever. Right. But you know, you can't please everybody. So um yeah, because you know, yeah, you're right, depending on like what what rate you were or you know what kind of officer, what boat you're on. Right. I guess it would hit you. Like you like that you you posted a photo today on post Facebook not too long ago with uh, showing you next to a fire control panel, old mm-hmm. MCC fire control panel. So I thought that was neat, but some fast attack guy be like, see like three days. They don't know right. nothing about going to see. <laughs> yeah. And it's got me pushing the reaching to push the tactical button, which it's that would be a problem good. if you actually did that. But it's uh, K car was on there like no oh <laughs> hell just push the just damn push thing <laughs> just push it that's what trop said just push it said i did nobody cared um <laughs> nobody cared <laughs> but they, they you know it's interesting to me because like i said when i was in i was single so i never really got a view of the the family side of things other than a few married friends or something like that uh, and and usually i don't know about it on the grant or you know wherever we were but Married guys, oh, and I got, guys didn't hang out a lot together. I got no, they didn't. But I mean, it, there was drama though. That, so we had a cook. He was on the blue crew in the Grant, and I think he had a death back home or something. So he got pulled out of rotation, and he ended up having to come on patrol with us. So he ended up just transferring to our crew. And then uh, you know you have the uh, when you. you I don't know about out there you know, on you uh, Ohio guys, but you know we always had a picnic after patrol. You know, everybody's come by, but so you see the wives and come by. Well, the cook brings his wife, and his wife was one of the notorious ones I was telling you about. It the enlisted clubs and other clubs, you know, and gr- and rotten grotten. <laughs> so we're like, we're like, that's his wife. Oh, and then we're like, so somebody's got to tell him. <laughs> no. So was that got it? No, we ended up having to tell him because we were like, I'm going to tell him. I'd say, well, well, you went out with her. That's why you're not going to tell him. It was just a big mess, you know, but, you know, why does anybody have to tell him? <laughs> I, you know, we, I, I didn't end up telling him, but I, it was agreed to that they did tell him. And they, and of course he ended up being getting divorced. Yeah. Well, you got to, sometimes you go, he was a good guy for one thing. I think it was the main thing. I mean, it was just some guy you didn't really care for. Maybe you wouldn't tell him, but we did tell him. So he didn't go psychotic or nothing like that, but he I actually, after he worked through it, he was kind of thankful. He had a suspicion that was going on. Right. But the, I mean, that's what I would have said. He, he, he's he got to know. I mean, there's. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it happened. So, I mean, yeah. I, I had my drama with marriages on the boat. That's for sure. So well, I had drama, let, but none of them were my wives. <laughs> none of your wives. Good so how many, how many wives did you date, Dave? None. I, that's not what I meant by that. That's uh it was no, <laughs> I know but it, that, but, but it that affects everything. I mean, you get, you know, you got a small division. We had seven guys in strategic fire yeah. control division. You got one guy that's going through stress like that. Yeah. It affects everybody. It does. It, yeah. it does. Uh, anyway, what I was going to say is they had a a really interesting display of how the the families dealt with things and had some things with that. They have a really, it's a stuffed submarine. With a picture of the submariner in the in the porthole looking out at the kid. 
which I thought was pretty huh. cool. I'd never seen one of these. Yeah. This had to be something long after. Yeah. The big, um, I think the big controversy with the, with the whole exhibit comes down to there's part of the exhibit deals with women on submarines. Mm -hmm. And it actually talks about the fact that most of the sailors today are fine with it. They don't have a problem. And it's the cold war submariners, us that are split as to whether or not we think women should be on submariners or not. And there doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be any, any changing of the opinion. You're either dead set against it or you're okay with it. Well, that's, Navies. You're right. I knew it would integrate because other navies had already been doing it for a while. So it, it was definitely possible. Hmm. This is what happened, and I don't have a problem with it. I, but you know, but it was our time in the navy, and it, and this is their time, and and good for them. I mean, sounds like there's a lot of women doing good things. Like we posted photos uh, before, where you know they heck they where they had like a whole woman on watch. Right. thing and control one time i think i posted which i thought was interesting so I, yeah i should be having a commanding officer or any day any they have any an xo day, now there is an xo i think is it there's a new there a pipeline right i think it's the kentucky but i'm not don't quote me on that that has a female xo and she she just reported so this just happened uh in recent days but right. it was um i don't know man i remember because i had been out of the navy I don't know, 10, 15 years when that happened. I got out in 91, and that happened in the mid-2000s, as I recall, late 2000s. And I remember being somewhat concerned about it, and I remember my concern being validated by what happened uh, to the women on the Wyoming when that second class rigged up the camera to their showers. Oh yeah. And I, yeah, I, yeah. I, my position at the time was this was predictable. The Navy is as fault as this for anybody because they knew that this was going to happen. Right. But I don't have a problem with the, with the, with the females on the submarine. I mean, they either, you're either qualified or you're not. And if you're qualified, then you've earned the right to be there. So right. I don't have a problem with that. that was, but I thought it was interesting that they, they went out of their way in the exhibit to talk about it. it's the cold war submariners who seem to have the biggest split and problem with it. Right. It's like whatever. But the real the real controversial element and I told her I I didn't even know this was an issue in the submarine fleet. I had no clue that did you know that transgender is a thing on submarines? I was just getting ready to say it, Dave. I mean, you probably got pronouns, transgender. I mean, cuz it's in society now. Right. So, you know, the only thing I worry about that cuz th this is uh, this gets in a whole different topic besides submarines about how they're trying to divide us on every line, but you get all those dividing lines. It becomes a real headache for the command, you know, for the, for the, like the CEO XO and the Cobb. And it's just, so you're constantly dealing with all those problems. And, and like, like in the elementary schools here, the kids are allowed to change their pronouns, like on a day-to-day -day structure now. And if you don't address them by the proper pronoun, you know, you get in trouble. So it's it's ridiculous. So if that gets out in the fleet, well, my feeling is is uh, we're going to start seeing submarines sink to the bottom. Well, apparently, it is in the fleet. I didn't know this, and apparently, it's on submarines. And I was I was slightly taken aback by that because I thought it would be the one place where you really wouldn't want to deal with that. You know, you'd want to make it clear you're male, you're female, right? And but. Apparently now they, got, thing, and now I, they gotta they, yeah. they gotta come out with a block six class submarine now that's three football fields long so everybody can have their own compartment, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Right. Yeah. What what are you? I'm a cat. Well, yeah, we got the, the cat lockers over there. What are you? I'm I'm uh I'm a pony. Okay, over here. Over here. That's that's you you guys are over there. <laughs> well, I can certainly see where that would be the controversial <laughs> element of the of the exhibit. You know, dealing with submariners because it, you know, in my line of work, of course, I deal with this whole transgender ideology virtually every day anyway, but I just never even crossed my mind about it being on a submarine. I'm not sure how I would have dealt with that. I, I think I would have been okay with a female on a submarine. I, you know, again, I left the boat in 1987, but I think I would have been okay with it. 
Mm -hmm. But I don't know how I would deal. I, with, I would have been fine with it too. Yeah. It wouldn't have bothered me. I, I'm not sure how I would deal with with the transgender ideology on there. I, I don't. I I can't sit here and say I'd be fine. No, it, or I no it's too much. It's too much of a headache. I mean, because it breaks down the whole um, what, the whole structure of being in the military. You know what, what do you call it? Rank, rank right disorder. Or, or well, in this case, it'd be disorder instead of good order. <laughs> right. But the whole pronoun thing goes out the window because you call everybody with their last name anyway. Yeah. So unless they change it on the fly, you know. Right. So anyway, that's probably the most controversial part of the exhibit. <laughs> but overall, I'd rank the exhibit as as really good, A plus. And they obviously put a lot into it, a lot of thought into it, and a lot of a lot of gathering of artifacts and people's they've got qual cards from the 1940s and 30s and just um Really cool stuff. So it's it's oh, definitely worth seeing. I forgot to tell you, Dave. I ran into a guy that was on the commissioning crew for the John Marshall today at the hospital. Really cool. So he was down there in sixty. He joined in the fifties. He said he was an engine man on the smoke boats, and you know because the nuke boats were getting built right. left and right, they started converting them and sending them to like a mini nuke school. And I I asked him if he met Rick over, and he said several times. I said, what was he like? He says, Rickover was Rickover. <laughs> he is the Rickover. He said, he said, was that bad, huh? He goes, he was that bad. He 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 didn't have a problem telling you what time it was. <laughs> is it weird that they're naming a new boat after him? Man, bring in, bring in Rickover now to straighten out this whole uh, transgender stuff. I'm sure he would love it. <laughs> uh, pretty, uh, Pretty odd. Yeah, well, maybe I, Rick Over's probably going to be like the, uh, you know, the whole enterprise, you know, there's all, you know, enterprise going from carriers all the way to Star Trek. Can make Rick yeah. Over, well, if there's submarines, there'll always be a Rick Over, I feel. One decommissions, yeah. I think there'll be another one. I guess. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, I'm not big on naming submarines after people to begin with, except yeah. for ballistic missile submarines. That's fine. You know, noted notable Americans, but what about John Warner? I mean, I know he was uh, a big, big guy for uh, you know, was he for the Defense Department, Secretary of Defense? Yeah, he was or... Secretary of Defense at one point. But yeah, so, yeah, mostly a senator know, from Virginia. Yeah, it just kind of surprised me, and I had I had to research that to figure out why that you know why why does he get to have a boat named after him? But politics, man. Same reason Stennis yeah. got one named after him. Yeah. And boy, yeah. are they regretting that now. Because we should, we should, they should name a boat boats after me and you, Dave. Maybe we could start a petition. The SS Bowman. <laughs> you want a smoke boat? <laughs> kind of, smoke what boat kind boat of boat, boat do you want? Do you want a boomer or a fast boat? Oh, I don't, man. It'd have to be a jacked up boat if it was mine. Plenty of transgender stuff going on. I don't know. Let's see. I, I I go for one of those new Columbia classes, and they're never going to get built because District the of news. Columbia said, class. Yeah, a District of Columbia, because they they said that the, they missed they missed steps on their uh, initial papers to say this is how we're going to build it, and this right. is the time it's going to build, the material is going to build it, and it turns out there's nobody to work or do the jobs to even build it. Can't even find anybody to train to build the dang thing. So, well, what do you what do you do? You know, I went to school for welding. Maybe I could uh, move to New London and build submarines. That's what I was thinking, man. All, all those old guys, are, we still know how to work. Man, I, I, I even did the shocks to my car last week. Well, my son pretty much did them, but I was in there tooling, you know? So if you can probably, turn a wrench, man, probably make my 100 and, bucks an hour. Turn my a wrench, knees don't man. bend, so be hard <laughs> to get into those tanks and stuff. And hey, did hard you hard ever get down on your knee with the, with the, uh, the, the, a replacement knee you know that's kind of weird because you know the nerves yeah. are gone and you yeah. put it on it, it just don't feel right you know i can get down mm -hmm. to the floor on my knees i cannot uh, get up i have to yeah. have getting up and that's that, that's just with one knee replaced and the other knee pretty well shredded so well that oh you need the other one that's why i was telling you with the atrophy and both being gone it's it's really difficult getting getting up even getting out of the car i gotta pull myself out of the car it's yeah. ridiculous it's i had to better i had to change parking spaces today because when i pulled in at the dental clinic 
there was a car that was parked and I thought I had room, but when I opened the door, I'm like, there's no way I can get out of this. Mm-hmm. My knee doesn't bend like that. So I had to, I had to move parking spaces, but yeah. So my other knee is pretty well shredded. And the knee I had replaced in 2016, I went through seven knee surgeries before they finally replaced it. I went in, I went in with this one a year ago in December to say, you know, we probably need to scope this one. And he literally said to me, we don't do that anymore. It's not worth the risk. So we just wait until it's completely gone and then we replace it. Then you're like me, you wait too long and it's bone on bone and you have to get a blood transfusion. Uh, Yeah, I was mine was bone on bone. And (laughs) I have a picture of me that was taken about a month before my surgery. And my, I had come up here for my uncle's funeral. We were staying with my brother-in-law and he took a picture of me out at, uh, one of the, one of the museums at McCord and just seeing the way I'm standing because my, I know my knee is hurting so badly at that point with that bone on bone and you can see it in my face and it's like, uh, wow. Yeah. I, need I wonder how many, uh, missile techs have bad knees, you know, because, you know, playing around with those rockets, the radiation you get, you know? They lie to you about those TLDs, so you know, maybe that's why. <laughs> what do you mean they lie why, to you about TLDs? That's why, uh, they don't check those things. They're like, oh, yeah, you got a little bit of radio. Woo, better not tell them. 63 like, millirim, yeah, lifetime, my, lifetime exposure. Safe. Safe. <laughs> safe. <laughs> Go back yeah. on the next patrol and shut up. <laughs> back then, I wouldn't have minded. Back then, I... You know, back then my knee was trashed anyway, but I kept going out because back then we didn't we didn't complain about things like that. We said, get- I, "I am laying about that because uh, I mean, uh, I did exceed. I mean, it was still in a safe zone, but I exceeded to where they're like because I I love doing the tube diving all the time. Hmm. I volunteer to be inside a rocket all the time, you know, so eventually get too much radiation, and so the next patrol I wasn't allowed to." play with rockets at patrol just out of the tube stand watch nuclear weapon security guard what i what i really remember was my knees were really bad at one point and the doc doc moon put me on some sort of painkiller i don't remember what it was it started with an i and it worked mm-hmm. so good so good that i went i went to work i did all of the and I kept playing basketball and football and softball for the, for the boat and everything else and tore them up even worse. But, but I didn't care because it didn't hurt. And then when he stopped whatever, giving me that, it was like, doing? wait a minute, this sucks. Well, I'm not putting you on the binnacle list for that. So, so it was like Doc ba- Brown as in Back to the Future, Doc Brown? No, Doc guy? Moon. Doc Moon. No, <laughs> Doc Moon. <laughs> It was uh Yeah, so did you see the pictures on the drive that was out just a week, like a week ago of the the Russian submarine and missiles showing the reactor? No, I must have missed that. Is that yeah, on the page? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, if you if you just do uh, Google submarine and you know, go through the news, it's dr- yeah, it's on the drive. It was like a week ago or something. Hmm. They're showing off they're showing pictures of the reactor and I, I'm like, Well what are they trying to prove here? You know, what's the dealio with them? Well, you know, they got it. They, they tend to brag about a lot of things because they, I mean, what what are we supposed to say? Well, we don't, the Americans don't have a reactor because they're not willing to show the, the reactor. Can't, pu- can't pull the pants down and show the reactor. There it is. Rare look inside a <laughs> nuclear reactor inside a Russian ballistic missile submarine. Looks just like the movies, man. Told, told you. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of. Uh... You see two, see two dudes standing on top of it. You see the guy's like pants leg. I'm like. It's awful close to that reactor. <laughs> Nothing <see>. on. <laughs> what class of submarine is that? I think it said it was a, one of their missile submarines. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely a missile submarine. It's a Bore class, so it is brand new, I guess. Interesting. I'll have to read that. I, I had completely missed that. I, I don't know. Weird. Yeah, was, anyway, the exhibit is fantastic. If you're in the keyboard area, make sure you go to the museum. They're closed on Tuesdays, but they're open uh, Wednesday through Sunday, I think, or Monday. They might be closed on Monday, but I know they're closed on Tuesday, uh, which is why I didn't go yesterday. But um, it's definitely worth it. Check the, make check sure you check the weather before you go, though, because there might be mushroom clouds out in the background. So, Well, 
you're, you know, you're five miles away from Bangor, so you should be okay. I haven't had a chance to listen to your podcast yet, but, you know, when it gets 90 seconds to midnight on, on the atomic clock, I mean, before it was minutes, like five or ten, what did it start out, ten minutes or something like that? I think it when started it out at 11 out. back in the, in, I know it went to 11 in 1991 back, it backed from like five or six minutes to midnight back to 11. But that, well, the, well, the point being, that was scary. I mean, if it was 10 minutes to minute. Oh my gosh, we're all, all going to die. And now we're 90 seconds. No, see, here's the problem <laughs> with the bulletin for atomic scientists. And I'm not trying to be mean or rude or anything here, but they have a 75 year record of being completely wrong on everything. They've never gotten anything right. So, and and they left out the asteroid. They have all these reasons why we're 90 seconds from midnight, but they don't have the asteroid, which is the one thing that actually could have done it. Right. But, but they they're just nuclear scientists. Off. They're not astrophysicists. They're phys well, physicists. Physicists. They're not politicians either, but they got Vladimir Putin on that list. <laughs> anyway good it was a good point <laughs> quite the thing so that was uh that's where that uss chicago is now here for her decommissioning currently the oldest boat in the in the fleet which means she has the cribbage board yeah. i always i always hate that yeah. when they bring these things in for retirement that's one of the first flight la classes with the fair water yep uh, the did they have some of the Fairwater planes with the VLS? I don't think so. I think when they went VLS uh, with the right. Tomahawk. USS Chicago figures prominently in um, Clancy's book, Red Storm Rising. So she's the USS Dallas of that book. But anyway, the uh, she's here now to be decommissioned. And I, I hate to do it, but every now and then I drive over to Port Orchard directly across from the from the naval shipyard where the where the all the submarines are there for recycling and i just yeah. i just sit there because I, I tell you some days it's hard man it's it's like my entire navy is gone just about uh, every ship that was in the navy when i was there is just about gone all the frigates all the all the if we don't blow projects. ourselves up, maybe we'll, we'll be building starships out there or something. No, that's right. They build them in Iowa, according to the movie. I forgot <laughs> about that. That's where James Cook is. <laughs> yeah, that's movies. right. <laughs> so anyway, we are back. We will uh, we'll hopefully be getting together more often. I know we. I know uh, Eric wants to do another one of the uh, Saturday night watches and that kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're in, if you're all interested in being a guest on the sub that drop me an email, dolphin, Dave at slipperyfish.com or Eric. At the sub Eric at the sub And if you want to be a part of that on watch, we'll put, I'll, I'll put a link on the YouTube. Maybe uh, Dave can too, but we'll put a link to the last one. Uh, a lot of people like that on watch uh, video that we did. So maybe, you know, when we do that, it would be really cool if we can get as many. I heck, if we had like five people, five guests would be cool because you know you can walk in and we can just try to make it as much like the boat was as possible. And then I think it'd be a really good time, get a lot of different views on things and talk about all the crazy stuff when a bunch of off watch submariners had nothing to do and they weren't in Iraq and just going shooting, uh, shooting a breeze, right? Without the other other name, anyway. <laughs> You can do the yeah, Ginger and Marianne argument, but now you got to update that to Velma and Daphne. That's true. Yeah. Well, then that gets back to the, what we were talking about earlier, too. Right? It's just a big mess. Yeah. Can you imagine what they're talking about now? You know, you know they're making fun of it. Especially, oh, the cop walks in and the cop was, I don't want to hear anything talking about transgender. <laughs> and it's a female cop on top of that. <laughs> right. And then she goes That's and tells. A, then she goes to the goat locker and tells, and tells, uh, tells transgender jokes. That's right. Because that's real. That's reality. And then the one transgender people it, turn him in, and go, you know, they're picking on me. Oh my god! Yeah, the cop was picking on me. I can't even. Remember when the only thing we really had to worry about was the one Bible thumper you had that was against the pornography. Didn't want the porn. Oh yeah! Out. Remember when that was the big problem? And, it's like oh well we oh got... it was well yeah that's that goes down to yeah we got that mormon uh cap i think he ended up decom the he was the decom co because my co got relieved for 
nefarious reasons. <laughs> but yeah, he uh Arthur he was a Mormon captain and he went he went he went and cleared out uh uh, what would you call the P mags, the smut mags that have been there since the commissioning of the grant? Right. I mean, stuff these these things probably be worth a uh, you know few grand for a copy of them. <laughs> They're worth more than that just for the historical value. And I noticed they didn't cover any That's of right. that in this in this exhibit. None of that came into play. Yeah, so. like, yeah, it's hey Dave, it smells like gaming still. <laughs> yeah, get it done. Anyway, good time. Well, good time. If you want to join us? We'd love to have you and talk with you as well except for the one guy and you know who you are hey dave it smells like something else up in this corner anyways anyways yeah this is eric and, <laughs> and i'm Dolphin join David. us next Flip time <laughs> yes uh yeah go to our facebook page it's facebook slash group slash the sub vet hit, hit, hit us up on twitter slash the sub vet and dave has a bunch of other awesome podcasters so be sure to drop by the dave bowman show and check out some of his other stuff he does got a lot of cool stuff on there to check out that's for sure so uh, i guess that'll be it you ready i think so we haven't done this since uh, november so the get, what is that drum roll? the hand motion and then i'm doing a drum roll oh can you hear that no the... all right ready one two three the, the sub sub bed. Bed. Yeah, we still need help. Anyway, <laughs> all right, everybody have a good week. Stay safe out there. Dodgers mushroom clouds if you see them.